President Donald Trump means business, especially when it comes to enforcing immigration laws. A campaign promise is now in order to build a wall on the U.S.-Mexico border. And we now have an idea of just how the president wants to pay for it. A 20% tax on imports from Mexico. But it doesn't stop with a wall. Another barrier could be going up for refugees. President Trump is planning to stop them, at least temporarily, from entering the U.S. Anyone from Libya, Syria, Iraq, Iran, Yemen, Somalia, Sudan, all countries that are majority Muslim, would have to wait at least 30 days to get a visa. The order hasn't been signed yet, but it would also cut the number of refugees that the U.S. takes in by more than half. This could be the great Trojan horse of all time. Because you look at the migration, study it, look at it. Now they'll start infiltrating with women and children. But could it really be the greatest Trojan horse of all time? ABC 10's Giacomo Luca talked with refugees living in Sacramento about the challenging process to enter the U.S., a process that could soon get even tougher. It's not, um, Reza Alizada is a freshman at Encina High School, a big change for the 15-year-old compared to five years ago. He wasn't in school, instead he worked at a Turkish plastics factory making 85 cents an hour. Like I worked 12 hours per day and then we had just one, one, uh, one day off. Alizada's story didn't begin there. He was born in war-ridden Afghanistan. There is not any home for me, there is not any job, there is not any school for me to go. Seeking safety, his family fled to Iran, Turkey and eventually sought a home in America. Uh, we wouldn't find our future in Turkey. You have a job yeah. and you have a car. Mason Gizzard works with a Sacramento-based nonprofit called Student Reach that helps high school-aged refugees transition to the U.S. Tell me about the process of gaining refugee status in the U.S. It's a long process and um, even some of our students it's taken 10 years. First, a person or family must apply to be recognized as a refugee through the United Nations. To do that, they must be able to prove reasonable fear of persecution for reasons of race, religion, or nationality. If those requirements are met, they can be referred for resettlement in a country like the United States. Then begins a series of intense security screenings that determines if there are security risk, possible connections to terrorists, or if the person has a criminal background. These interdepartmental checks go through the National Counterterrorism Center, Department of Justice, Homeland Security, the Department of State, and Defense Department. If all is okay, then an interview with Homeland Security and a medical check. And the process is so stringent that less than 1% of the global refugee population makes it through. And if there's any doubt through the investigative process, this pages long process, the person won't be allowed to enter the country. I'm Giacomo Luca for ABC 10 News. Well, tensions are building between the U.S. and Mexico over that border wall. Chris Thomas is following that story for us. And Chris, Mexico's president is actually now canceling plans to come to Washington next week. That's right, Dale. The meeting had been set for next week, but Mexican President Nieto called it off. It comes as President Donald Trump refuses to back down on a border wall, claiming the American people will not pay for it. Well, actually, they might through a 20 percent tax on imports from Mexico. But President Trump says Mexico will pay it back. Mexico says they won't. Early this morning, the president tweeted that it would be better to skip the meeting if the Mexican president continued to say they would not pay for that wall. The president of Mexico and myself have agreed to cancel our planned meeting scheduled for next week. Unless Mexico is going to treat the United States fairly, with respect, such a meeting would be fruitless White House officials say the president is signing off on another executive order calling on Congress to investigate alleged voter fraud. The chief of the U.S. Border Patrol has resigned after just six months on the job. The AP reports Mark Morgan was asked to leave the agency and decided to resign. Morgan often clashed with the Border Patrol Union, which endorsed Donald Trump for president. Now keep in mind, nearly half of the Mexican border in California, Arizona and New Mexico already has some kind of barrier. But Texas, which claims more than 1,200 miles of the border, only has about 115 miles of fence. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell says he expects the wall will cost 12 to 15 billion dollars. That's billion with a B, Dale. Just to be clear. <laughs> uh, yeah, which is why so many people are concerned about if it's built, who's going to pay for it? That's because right. it's not going to be cheap. Follow the money. Yeah. All right, mm -hmm. Chris, thanks. 
Well, a series of storms this month caused all kinds of trouble for a lot of people, but not everyone is so down about it these days. In fact, one kind of business is looking up, way up. ABC 10's Kurt Rivera shows us how some are cashing in on Mother Nature. Mary Ann Biddle has a problem. Right there in the corner. Her roof has a leak inside her Murata home. Especially with a downpour. Okay. That's when it kind of like comes into, and you can notice, you know, it's, I'm going, uh-oh, that's getting serious. Speaking to several roofing companies throughout Stockton, all said the same. Inundated, slammed, nonstop work. Phones are just ringing off the hook here. I mean, we get 30, 35 phone calls in before noon sometimes. Troy Baker's family roofing homes and businesses in Stockton 52 years. He says they just can't nail down all the calls. They have to actually shake off business to competitors. What kind of calls are you getting? Like, what are people saying about what, what's happening? Well, a lot of them are saying that they have a leak in their living room or a leak in their kitchen and it just started after these heavy rains or they, uh, you know, with the wind damage, they say, say that, you know, the, the tree fell on their roof. Business for roofing companies is so busy, bigger jobs scheduled weeks ago on hold because of the numerous calls for leak repairs. Chris Ferguson up on the roof two years, worked busy from the latter half of last year to now. Uh, it's been exhausting. Yeah, a lot of long weeks, long days. Yeah, just everybody has leaks. Troy Baker's pitch, if you need roof work done, patience. I got a lot of calls where people want something done right now, and if you can't do it, let us know. Patience paid off for Marianne Biddle. She's getting her gutters cleared and two leaks fixed. But this is a good day. <laughs> it's, a, it's a happy day, yeah. In Murata, Kurt Rivera, ABC 10 News. So by the way, if you're still cleaning up storm damage, the Contractor State License Board has some tips for you about hiring someone to do work for you. State law bans any home improvement or construction work that costs more than $500 without a contractor license. For service and repairs, the total must be $750 or less, otherwise a licensed contractor is going to be needed. And this is important too, no payments are required until the work is done. For standard home improvements, you have three days to cancel the work. The down payment, if there is one, can only be 10% of the total cost or $1,000, whichever is less. Well, it's closing time after being open for nearly two weeks. Cal OES closed the last gates on the Sacramento Weir. That weir was built in 1916, and it's the only weir on the Sacramento River with gates, and those gates have to be manually opened and now closed. A weir is a long dam built across or along a river to control its flow. And after all that rain that we got in January, the rivers definitely needed some relief. But it also washed away the drought, at least in some parts of uh, California, mm -hmm. or made it less severe. That was good news. That's right. January was a big uh, drought buster, at least through most of the state. As you can see, the northern part of the state came in about 20 inches above average in some of those pockets right around the Sierra Nevada, 16 inches above normal for parts of the central Sierra Nevada, four inches above normal for the hard hit Central Valley, which is a big agricultural producer. And then even for Southern California, we were 12 12 inches above normal for some pockets as well. And that made a huge change for our drought monitor. Back last year, you can see nearly the entire state was covered in extreme or exceptional drought. And now only 2% of the state is covered in that extreme drought. No part of the state is an exceptional drought, which by the way, is the most severe category of drought. Well, this ridge of high pressure is going to keep that storm track to the north of us for the time being, and it is going to keep us a little bit on the mild side as well. Unfortunately, part of that is also going to be poor air quality, so burn restrictions go in place at midnight. For tomorrow, it's a cold start to the day. We'll see those lows drop down into the 30s. Patchy fog returning to the weekend forecast, Dale, and then February starts off wet again. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. uh, but if I'm going to sacrifice a Duraflame log tonight, i got to get her burned before midnight, right? So <laughs> yes. Just saying, could be chilly night. Okay. All right, thanks, Monica. Sacramento State has turned off their water, most of it anyway, after tests showed high levels of lead. The university says that it shut down their drinking fountains, filling stations, and all other sources for water. Testing was actually done by professors and students on the campus earlier this month. And out of 449 water stations, about 19% of them had lead levels that were not safe. Anybody who's concerned about lead exposure can make an appointment with a doctor to get tested. We've got information on how to do that and a number to call on abc10.com.
Well, picture this, the owner of a marijuana business driving hundreds of miles to pay taxes with a lot of cash just sitting in the back seat. Well, a bill in the state legislature would change that, allowing counties to collect taxes and fees from marijuana business owners. The problem, see, is really location. For pot businesses, the closest state board of equalization office where you can pay taxes and fees could be hundreds of miles away. Being business in California requires a number of licenses, permits, a number of tax agencies are involved, and um, there's quite a bit of payments due to local and state governments. Voters legalized medical marijuana back in 1996, but now that recreational pot has been approved by voters, that could put this legislation on the fast track. San Francisco State Senator Scott Weiner co-sponsored that bill and says the reception to it so far has been very positive. Well, for the first time in six years, tuition for University of California students is going up. It's, of course, not what UC students wanted to hear. But the Board of Regents voted to raise tuition 2.5%, or about $282 a year. Critics, though, say the tuition increase is just too much for students who are already struggling to pay for college. But UC President Janet Napolitano says the hikes are needed to maintain the quality of a UC education, especially when student enrollment is going up and support from the state is going down. A tuition freeze had been in place since 2011. From gender-neutral bathrooms to gender-neutral IDs, what some state lawmakers are trying to do to help Californians who don't identify as a man or a woman. Californians who don't identify as either a man or a woman might soon be able to select a third option when it comes to filling out government documents. State lawmakers gathered at the Capitol to announce the Gender Recognition Act. The new bill seeks to add a new market for people who don't identify with any specific gender. Supporters say the bill would make it easier for people looking to change their gender identity. Transitioning uh, is incredibly hard for people. It brings so many challenges and obstacles on a personal level, on a professional level, on a health care level, uh, and we should not be putting additional state-created legal obstacles in people's way. The bill would also allow people under the age of 18 to apply for a change in gender on their birth certificate. If passed, the law would take effect next year. Last year, Governor Jerry Brown signed a bill into law requiring all single-stall bathrooms in California to be labeled as gender neutral. Well, Michael Tubbs is the new mayor of Stockton, and one of his first orders of business is an app for high school students to help them find ways to pay for college. It's called Scully, and it's billed as a one-stop shop for students looking to apply and cash in on college scholarship money. And today, juniors and seniors at Franklin High School in Stockton, in the computer lab, got a chance to try it out. So showing kids the opportunities and making it easy for students to see what they qualify for is an important first step to really creating a college-going culture um, in our city. The Stockton School District is going to be first to use the app, but the mayor eventually wants to make the app available for all local school districts. Well, Monica, a break from the rain for now, but uh, the nights and the mornings have been rather chilly. Oh, and especially up in the Sierra. Look at this beautiful panoramic view from Diamond Peak sent in by our own Rachel. I know she was dying to hit that powder up there in just beautiful conditions. We will have more snow and rain in the forecast. Not immediately. In fact, we're looking at some unseasonably warm weather ahead just in time for the weekend. Your forecast is next. Well, let's check in now with Chris Thomas, who's tracking all stories you're talking about today on social media. And, and Chris, what is this? Tostitos wants to chaperone uh, your Super Bowl party? <laughs> well, that's one way of putting it, Dell. In honor of the big game, the chip maker is launching a specially made bag with a sensor that can detect alcohol on your breath. Here's what it looks like. If you've been drinking, an image of a red steering wheel shows up on the black bag. It also comes with a reminder not to drink and drive. As cool as it sounds, you will not find them at the grocery store. It was created as part of a marketing campaign with Mothers Against Drunk Driving and Uber. The bags will not be sold or even be available to the public, but the chip maker will give out $10 Uber discounts for 25,000 people who buy any chips between now and the Super Bowl.
you know, it sure would be nice if we could get our hands on one of those bags, Dale. You well, know, both if, of us are sitting works, like, yeah. I mean, <laughs> so, I mean, it is cool, but no one can get it. So, mm. But I'm, I'm guessing it probably would be a good thing for a lot of people leaving Super Bowl parties to take Uber. And so if you can find a discount in a bag of chips, I mean, uh, munch on. I like how you did that, Dale. <laughs> <laughs> See, you did what they wanted us all like, to do, like talk about it and bring it together. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Dale. All right. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> Sacrament. And, uh, you know, we're not just saying that. That claim is now actually backed up by science. MIT's Treepedia project confirms that Sacramento is the greenest city in the entire country. And worldwide, we come in at number three, trailing right behind Vancouver, Canada and Singapore. The Treepedia project uses Google Maps Street View to, I guess, visually drive down the street and measure how many trees are in each city Sacramento is. The city of trees. Although, Monica, in January, I guess we probably lost a lot of trees, or yes. at least parts of trees, but, um, and the cleanup from that continues, but I'm guessing we're still a city of trees. That's right. I was just taking a walk today, and some of those root balls are way up here. Right. I mean, just the depth of how much ground they unearthed. Yeah, well, and that amazing. ground was so saturated after mm -hmm. just weeks of rain. Yeah. It's nice that we're drying out right now. I know that for five years of drought, we just have been saying we need more, we need more, we need more. Getting a little bit of break at this point is probably a good thing. Clear skies outside right now. We will see some patchy morning fog early for our Friday forecast. Feels good to say that. Right around 50 at this hour, 24 degrees for Tahoe, and it's been a mild afternoon. Expect that weather pattern to continue even through the end of the work week into the weekend. 55 are high today. We're still below average, though. 56 is our average high. Morning low, 39. That is right on target. Again, we remain well above average for that precipitation since October 1st, the beginning of the water year, over 19 inches of rain. Normally in a water year, we're just slightly over 18 and a half inches, so we did very well in the month of January. Temperatures today, well, we're noting mostly in the 40s for much of the foothills, including Teresa in West Point at 47 degrees. Jim in Sierra City hit 40. Roseville 56 and a little warmer for Citrus Heights at 61. Of course, you can participate. Just hit us up at weatherforce at abc10.com or hashtag WXForce10 on Twitter and Instagram. Picked up a bit of a northwest wind for today. Now, what that helps do is dry out the atmosphere. We've got that building high pressure ridge sinking and warming air. So as long as we keep with that northwest wind, we won't see too much in the way of fog. For tonight, we'll see generally clear skies all the way through early for our Friday forecast. It's not until Saturday where those northwest winds back off just a little bit that some patchy fog starts to form, particularly on the west side of the valley. And that will stay with us through about 8 a.m., clearing for the afternoon, setting us up for a beautiful weekend. That fog will reappear on Sunday as well. And then we track this line of showers that's off the coast. It initially just heads to the north of us, but by Wednesday, we're starting to see the development getting closer to California, finally moving inland on Thursday, and it actually stays with us on Friday as well, returning to a wetter pattern to start off the month of February. So for tomorrow, highs will be in the 30s for this year. Looking at our five-day forecast, we continue to see dry conditions both Saturday and Sunday. Highs actually warm into the 40s. I know it's been cold up there in the Sierra, especially overnight. 50s along the coast and inland as well. San Jose, we're up to 59 degrees. Fairfield at 57. And as we travel through the Central Valley will hit morning lows in the 30s, but with the sunshine, highs tomorrow will warm into the 50s. We'll be keeping an eye on that air quality again as that high pressure ridge starts to back off a little bit. We'll start to mix in some of that poor air quality with little air movement. As far as that rain, it returns late Wednesday, continues Thursday, Friday. So again, starting to see the rain return after a nice drying out period, Dale. Yeah, and a 60 degree high on uh, Monday, I guess. Yes. I haven't seen one of those 61? in a while. Think, no, right? We haven't. You're right. All right, Monica, thanks. See, I'm paying attention. All right. Thank you, Monica. In the wake of what was probably the King's biggest win of the year, DeMarcus Cousins being honored by the league's coaches. And with that honor, he joins some elite company. We'll explain. No, this hasn't been a great season for the Kings, especially since the very beginning of 2017. They lost Rudy Gay for the year. At one point, there were 11 games under 500, but the one constant all season has been the outstanding play of DeMarcus Cousins and the NBA coaches have again taken notice. Cousins has been selected by NBA coaches to the West All-Star team for the third straight year. Boogie's number is certainly worthy of that honor. He's the league's fifth leading scorer, averaging a career best 28 points per game, better than 10 rebounds per game as well. And he's among the most efficient players in the league, ranking behind only Anthony Davis at his position. It's Cousins' third overall trip to the All-Star game. And he's part of some exclusive company. Only three other Sacramento-era players have made multiple all-star trips. 
Mitch Richmond had six appearances along with an MVP award. Chris Weber was selected four times and Peja Stoyakovic also had three. And although it's not yet official, we've learned that Boogie will also participate in the Skills Challenge, a contest that's part of the All-Star Saturday festivities. And don't forget to join myself and sports producer Sean Cunningham coming up at 6.30 on Facebook Live as we discuss the Kings and all things NBA. Again, Dale, that is coming up on the ABC10 Facebook page. Me and Sean talking Kings. We all had right. a great response the first time. Hope to see it again. Okay, that'll be great. Hey, you need to give us a little warning where you invoke names like Peja and, and Chris. I mean, you know, just... The glory days. the good old days. The, yeah. the good old days, indeed. Yeah. <laughs> right. Thanks. All right. Uh, the good old chilly evenings, but uh, yes. we've got suns hanging around for a few days. Huh? We sure do. And nice drawing out. We've had so much much to deal with rain in the month of January that as we're starting to wrap things up for the end of the month, it's going to be some cold mornings with lows right about 32. Had a little bit of patchy frost out there. Mild afternoon though. Highs will be in the mid 50s. All right. Burn ban goes on effect at midnight. You're going to burn along today. So get it done by midnight. <laughs> Have a good night. See you at 11.